we will go on to now a new topic called relational constraints the type of relational constraints which are there in a dbm there are five set of relational constraints you call them domain tuple uniqueness key entity integrity and referential integrity we will see them one by one the first we will see is domain constraints imagine you do have a table called student and you do have student id name and age okay imagine this is the table you have student id let's say i do have s1 s2 and s3 name i have let's say akil atul and let's say nibit age 21 22 and 21 now if you look here when you create the table you do have things called data types which we will learn like okay just like in any programming language you do have data types even in tables so you will be telling student id it can be of character type which means when it can take both alphabets and numbers name i say it can be of character type which means you know all the uh, alphabets numbers everything can be taken and i even have a third column over there called age now age let me say i say it can be a number or an integer which means it can take only a numeric value now when i specify the set of values for an attribute with the help of a data type i say that it is a domain constraint so here i told that age can be only number or integer which means you know i can very well enter 21 22 and so on but you know imagine i want to enter something like 2a it will not be possible so that is what you mean by a domain constraint set of values for an attribute and it also should be an atomic value which means you know it should be non divisible so this is what you mean by domain constraint tuple <coughs> uniqueness constraint look here i have three records s1 s2 s3 which i call t1 t2 t3 now tuple uniqueness constraint means if i think about a particular tuple or a row look at s1 up till 21 there should be no other row in my table which is exactly the same now look here i just have three records over here none of the tuples repeat which means this table as of now it satisfies my tuple uniqueness constraint this table satisfies the tuple uniqueness constraint now imagine i do have another record called s1 akil 21 and this is my fourth tuple t4 look here s1 akil 21 i have it over here i even have it over here the same tuple repeat which means this particular table the tuple uniqueness constraint is not satisfied tuple uniqueness constraint means very simple each and every tuple in my table it should be unique we'll give go for the next constraint called key constraint now key constraint tells that in a table you should be having always a key which is 
primary key. Primary key it can either be a single key or it can be a composite key, which is a combination of more than one key. So key constraint tells that each and every table you should be having a primary key. Look here. This is a primary key. So this particular table it satisfies my key constraint. There should be a primary key. And imagine I need to enter uh, the details of Asna. Asna 22. Look here. I have not entered anything in my student ID. This is not permissible. It should have a primary key. And the primary key, it can never be null. It should always be not null. So, you know, key constraint talks about both these. One is, you should have a primary key. It can either be a single key or a composite key. And the primary key should not have a null value. So, you know, this particular table with Asna's detail over here with nothing as the student ID, the key constraint is not satisfied. The fourth constraint is entity integrity constraint. Entity integrity constraint is somewhat similar to your key constraint. Entity integrity constraint, it tells you no attribute of the primary key can be null. Okay, the second part of your key constraint. Key constraint tells you you should have a primary key and it should not be null. Entity integrity tells you it cannot be null. Like, you know, imagine I'm having a detail over here like Jesslyn 22. It does not satisfy my integrity integrity constraint. As I told you, it is a bit similar to your key constraint. You cannot have the primary key value as a null. The last constraint is referential integrity constraint. A very, very important concept. Fifth one, referential integrity constraint. Okay, now I do have a table over here. S2, a student, which has three details, S1, S2, S3. S1 will not repeat, S2 will not repeat, S3 will not repeat. Now, imagine I do have another table called course. Okay, course where I do have, let's say, course allocation number, which, let's say, is the primary key. I do have student ID and the date on which the course was assigned. Now look here, student ID, because you know, it is to be referenced. It is to be referenced in another table and it is a primary key of student table. Here, I tell it is a foreign key because you know, student ID is a primary key of another table and I'm connecting these two tables, I can say that this particular key in my course, it is a foreign key. This is my primary key over here. This is my foreign key over here. So I'll just give some numbers, CAN1, CAN2, I'm just having some entry, CAN3, CAN4, and CAN5. I can have S1 over here with a date. Because, you know, S1 is present over here. I can have S2 because, you know, S2 is present over here. I can have S3 because S3 is present over here. I can again have S1, no issues. S1 is present over here. I can again have S1 or S2 or S3. I can have it any number of times. But imagine I want to have S4. 
I will not be able to have a score because I do not have a corresponding entry of a score in my parent table. So this particular constraint where the foreign key of one table is to be referenced from the primary key of another table and that particular key, the primary key can happen here any number of times. And something which is not present over here cannot be written over here. All these together, I call it the referential integrity constraint. A very simple referential integrity constraint deals with your foreign key. 